G versus Team Liquid. Grand Finals, Game 2. Grand Finals, Game 2, that's right. Liquid pull out a Game 1 victory just very narrowly against a roster that's so storied. OG, Pilot I didn't get to formally introduce you, but welcome to the panel. Thank you. Still here with Gunner as well. And I just want to ask you a question about OG as a team. Like, it's unprecedented for the most part that a team with the exact same roster, after an entire year of balance patches, attends another Grand Finals at a, at a level of the game, like, you know, maybe Na'Vi was able to do a TI1, TI2. The game has gotten significantly more competitive. How do you think a team like OG has been able to manage such a feat like that? I think it's somehow they just hit the... Okay, there are like basically two reasons, I think. One reason is like they split the team after TI8, right? Okay. Anna left. And like they were just tumbling, tumbling around. Like they were not looking good. Yeah. Like it was not pretty. And then like I think everyone knew that eventually he was going to come back. Right. So like, yeah, th they like connected like... I don't know, it was a few months ago, right? And, like yeah. they, they had a bit of time. And they were still not doing that good, but you could see like they were a team again, like they were strong. And then, I don't know, they have like this attitude when it comes to TI, like somehow they get in this mindset where like they can play carefree, like they don't stress themselves out, they don't get exhausted, like they can just keep going and then like they feel confidence in each other and like they like whatever ideas they have. So you're saying like a the absence makes the heart grow fonder kind of thing? So oh, for sure, for sure. Ana leaves for a little bit and then you... I mean, if they were losing the entire year with Ana, then it would be it's harder. true. Like, there's more like baggage. Because like last TI was the same, right? Like he comes in. And like, it's not like they haven't played with him before, like, uh, No Tail won majors with that guy. And mm -hmm. Seb, like, he, he was coach and he, yeah, he was the coach. Yeah, he was the yeah. coach then. So, like, and the other reason is just, um, I don't know, it's like how they, how they play and like the heroes they have. I'm not sure. It just fits TI perfectly. It does, and we even felt that last TI, and it's not like they're even picking the same heroes as last TI or anything like that, because, well, for one thing, Grimstroke is getting selected. That dude wasn't even at last TI. So it's just, you know, it's that kind of magic that is so difficult to replicate. But Liquid proving that there are some vulnerabilities as they do take game one, and we are moving our way through the draft. Magnus, AA, and Io ban. So instead, OG choose to ban out the Alchemist, and Liquid will, uh, I guess, swap bans. They'll ban the AA instead. Liquid picks up Tidehunter and Templar Assassin. OG has Grimstroke and Tiny. Yeah, so Liquid had first pick this game. Mm -hmm. So they gave the threat of the first pick Alchemist. Ah, uh, okay. So they ban the AA, the Alk gets banned in response, and then the one big change was the Chen ban. Yes. Because I think that really helped Liquid's early game. Yeah. Oh, yeah speaking of the Chen, like, Kuro actually, like, that's a new thing for OG too. Like, I think Liquid is a scarier both first pick and second pick team than LGD, like in terms of the heroes they, they do. Like when they first pick Shen on Liquid, like, you know, like that hero is going to have impact. Like he has a lot right. of like branches, like he, he's comfortable with that hero. He knows what he can do with it and what he wants to do with it. And for like their last pick, like that was a bit of LGD's weakness, I feel. Like their scariest last picks were like Ami heroes, like right. Spectre and Slark, which are strong, but it's not the same as getting hit by like a Broodmother, Meep or Arc Warden. Like yeah. those heroes, sometimes you see them, you're like, Yikes. Yeah, everyone always talks about the importance of like a 20-second pick game winner, yeah. and yeah. like LGD went for like a Darkseer 20-second yeah. yeah. pick in their elimination game, yeah. so ultimately you need to have that X factor at the end of the draft. It can't just all be front-loaded in the first two phases. And it, it helps, because you spoke to me earlier like like uh, similarities, and like it's yes. Liquid do have, like even when they won TI Summit, right, like there are some similarities, except like they picked these annoying heroes very early for Matu mm -hmm. and like deal with it and then like we'll get something that's or good Or even later. like the GH Coddle the back GH, in the day. Yeah. Uh, Earthshaker as well. Shaker as well. And, and I feel like OG also, they, they're they kind of playing the same as TI8 with the, how they play the safe lane. Like how what here's No Tail plays. Like either he tries to play something that completely uh, gives Ana free farm. Like if you look at a lot of their especially group stage games, Ana is like far above everyone yeah. else in farm. Like he usually gets a very relevant hero to the game and No Tail has placed this, he plays Shen or Ange. And he's just securing farm for so him. Then, as someone who is very famously the position six, you're oh. saying that No Tail is kind of emulating that very sacrificial role, where it's all about making sure that his one position is enabled. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's fair. And uh, yeah, and then the other, like he had to play ET last game, right? And yeah. he can kind of do the same thing, but like his own game suffers way more when you play ET because you're just running in suiciding basically. Yeah, like at last year I was like Nature's Prophet, right? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. that's, that's that different here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Liquid's still scared of the Invoker. Yeah, I think they banned it last game too. They did, yeah. Uh, OG run it in both positions. Thompson's one of like the most famous Invokers, I mm -hmm. think, right now. And also Jarex is an Invoker player. So they have a little flex. I think it'd be a little surprising if OG would pick it as like a fuller. 
Because I don't think it matches well with no, the I other two heroes. No, I do that too much. I mean, OG for like their... Oh, oh yeah, okay. So, I don't think I've seen OG do that too much either. Yeah. But, mainly, mainly just newbie. Your boy MSS pilot. I was rocking that four position invoker like nobody's business. And also yeah. Seeker, right? Yeah, yeah. Seeker was doing it, it with it, the Absorb. Yeah, it fell a bit out of... It's a little slow. Like, it, it doesn't put that much pressure. It's just a group stage meme? Is that what you're telling me? I'm for, it might be. It might have been. It <laughs> might have been. We'll see. What would you get their hands on the Ember TA matchup? That matchup's a lot more Ember favor now. It used to actually be TA favored in yeah. the lane. Uh -huh. But now that you can't really deny, deal like you know, 120 physical or pure damage because the Ember. refraction got yeah, nerfed. You can't deny the creeps anymore, so the Ember can actually pressure you at level three and level five. Um, I'm actually. This is kind of cool that the TA is coming in. This, uh, I think it was the epicenter major, right? The hero was yeah. basically first pick. Yes. Because uh, she has like very few losing matchups, and even the losing matchups are like, you know, you can get to level three, four, or you can just jungle, jungle yeah. exactly, and you'll you'll be fine. Yeah, that's what and, we saw in the LGD series. Yeah, and but. I don't think she's supposed to be as good anymore. Like, I'm feeling, I'm, I want to see this, because let's say it's M Ember versus TA mid, right? Because mm -hmm. what should be able to happen is, like, the Ember slightly wins the lane, and then he can just chase after her, like, when she's trying to catch up. So you want, like, a very high activity Ember? Uh, you don't want, like, a farming lawnmower build Ember that goes for, like, a radiance yeah, yeah, or anything yeah. like that? You want one that's constantly bothering TA, making sure she can't take Ancients, yeah. that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah uh, I know Topson was one of the first guys to start going, like, Medallion on Ember. Mm -hmm. So he goes, like, Medallion, I think he went Medallion, Drums deaths or something yeah. along those lines. Okay. And he plays like in the enemy jungle the whole game and just like chains them and just chases them around. I mean that's just his style. Like yeah. that's what you could see yeah. last game. Like uh, what what stopped them? Like his tiny is. I, I was got a little satisfaction from seeing them like just get shut down. <laughs> with the, what the what what they're trying to pull like. Right. Sudden because you can see like uh, Seb hits level six in the off lane and like normal enches they stay there and they get the tower. You know they, it takes. It can take up to five minutes. Because no but, one can come to that lane once she yeah. has impetus. But like it's still she doesn't kill the tower that fast, right? But what he does, he just starts running at the enemy. Like he'll stand between the tier two and the uh, uh, tier one mid. And like it's so like you can't it's so hard to do something about it. Because all the heroes are so low level, it's like you can maybe kill him, but like if if you if you try to kill him and you fail, you basically lose the game. And even if you do kill him, it takes so many resources to just take him yeah. down. No, it's extremely. And then you know, then like he's running around there, and then like the tops and he's like he has his timing. Like if he plays Invoker tiny, then suddenly he's in there too. But that game, like last game, he has, he's just running over traps, running into yeah. four centaurs, like, and he gets stopped. I remember like last game when he, the guy was doing that move. The Thompson is walking into the jungle chasing the one of the supports. I forget which Rubik. Yeah, Rubik. Yeah, 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 yeah he's chasing Rubik. the Rubik for like a minute. Yeah, because he got trapped. And you, you kill the Rubik, and the camera goes to the mid tower, and there's an Ench no. sitting behind the mid tower, killing a tower while a Tiny is doing his own thing on the map. Yeah. No, it's uh, when they can run at you, like they're very frustrating to play against. And Omni Knight are definitely a hero that can enable running at you. Still, so far the only strength cord that Heavenly Grace is really going to be able to buff up is the Tiny, but obviously that's a great choice, especially once the Tiny gets the Aghanim Scepter. And Liquid going to pick up a Life Stealer. Even the Ember, though? You can stop him from getting like chain stunned by the True. Shadow Shaman. Gives him more HP. That's like the one thing they don't think about that much when you get Grace someone. It's 28 strength. That's yes, still HP that's on every true. hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's generally very good versus Tidehunter and Shaman. Like if you repel either just Ember or whatever they're picking next, mm -hmm. like that guy can he can just be in there. Like he's getting stunned for like a second max. It's also the Ember could be an Ana Ember. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. I think we mostly assumed it was a Topson Ember versus the. TA. Okay. And now that there's a Where would there? that put the tiny though? The Four? Oh, okay. Okay. So it would be sub Omni Knight off lane, mm. safe lane Ember, four position tiny, and then five position Grim Stroke. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go like really far out there, let's hear it. It could be a tiny three okay. with the Grim so he can combo with the Ink Swell. Oh. And then they put the Omni as a five it, uh, with the, the carry against though... the Life Stealer. And so the Grim the... would be a four. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. If you want to go out there. I feel like that's a against the life stealer. That's a bit tricky, though. Yeah, like it's... ink swell combos won't be that reliable. Oh, and now a liquid being picked up. I mean, sorry, Enigma <laughs> being picked up for liquid. Yeah, I think uh, they're gonna want to better carry the number this game. I don't know if we can. Yeah, I mean the lane for Amber here is like fine. I think. Yeah. Like uh, he can do fine either. I don't know what they have up their sleeves. You know, like to get something else from mid. But they played. What was it? Sven, I think, first the life stealer in the LGD series. Yes. It was kind of bad because of the Huskar, I think. Yeah. But they like the matchup, so I think that could be it. It's lanes well against Enigma as well. You kill his Eidolons. Monkey. Okay, so Topson, Monkey King most likely? Yeah. yeah. Ana, Ember. 
Seb as the Omni Knight and four position Tining. I assume so, yeah. And then five position Grimstruck. So before we go anywhere, why the Enigma though? Why did Liquid go for this Enigma pick? Uh, I mean, I think they think kind of simple about it. They like they have this Repel guy going in, right? And mm -hmm. he can play like an absolute idiot. Like right. they just throw stuff at him and he lives. Now you have the Enigma, just black holes him. Status uh, resistance exactly. won't help no against status, a black hole. Exactly. Okay. You can't deal with that. Plus, it's like these last, yeah, these last pick Enigmas are. Uh, you already picked your supports, right? So you don't have any cancels. So it's a free black hole game. Fair enough. Let's hear from Casey, who's talking to Saksha, team of OG. That was a great first game. It was back and forth the whole time. Did you, in any way in this draft, are you responding to how things went? We saw that you banned Meepo, or do you think it was just luck that you didn't end up with the win with that first one? I mean, we talked about Meepo. We knew they were picking it. We, I would just suit we were actually okay against Meepo. Obviously, the game went pretty, it was hard again, but we came back, so that's the positive side. Yeah, we, are, we were happy with the draft, yeah. Most Feel pretty confident. With this one? Oh yeah, oh, yeah with this one, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I know. Duh! Yeah. <laughs> well, best of luck to you, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Casey. Game two of Liquid versus OG here in the best of five grand finals of the International 2019, just about to kick off. What a start to the series. What are we expecting from this one, Fog? OG and Liquid coming into this game too. OG, they've been knocked back before at the beginning of a series, and we've For seen sure. what sort of a turnaround they can make as the series does unfold. Of course, the famous one being that of this same place, same time last year. Can they do it? in this best of five. Are we going to see them with this draft take a game back off Liquid or are Liquid going to keep the lead? They've got a lot of comfortable things coming out for the side of OG, right? We have Ana on a le his legendary Ember Spirit. We have Thompson on his master tier Monkey King, of course. Master tier! In a good matchup. At, well, what the players used to say was a good matchup. I know a lot of them talked about that Monkey King versus TA back when you could get the refraction tonight with your denies. Now you have to imagine it's even better for the Monkey King. So Thompson should be able to have a good time there versus Weeha in the mid lane. This last pick, Enigma, though, very interesting one. I loved what they mentioned on the, on the panel there. I think Kai was the one who said it, how Heavenly Grace makes it really hard for you to set up for kills, but Black Hole cannot be produced because that status resist does not work. And there's no cancels, of course, on the side of OG through that BKB that will be coming up for the Enigma eventually in this game. As well, it's quite a bit of harassment to see there. You've certainly got to watch out for, for what GH is going to be able to bring to the game. But overall, Liquid, once again, you now having this TA, having sort of a, uh, obviously this time the Weeha TA, we're going to see it in a bit of a different capacity, but they, they've got still this sort of similar idea, right? This whole fight that can go down with the control that Mind Control and GH can offer that will just give the time and space for Miracle and Weeha to just disassemble their opponents. Yeah. It's all about the team fights really coming into play when you start getting toward these later stage games of TI. And we see right away. So a lot of the times we've been seeing the Enigmas, they start in the Radiant jungle. This time he's Radiant, so it's a lot more natural for him. So we see Jerex, he puts a ward inside of the jungle to block one of those camps in that triangle area down in the Radiant jungle, but it actually was spotted. Liquid had already prepared <laughs> down here with this ops ward to see everything that's going to be happening. They actually know that that camp is warded. So JH is probably going to stay playing up top for the time being. And just keep denying creep says. Talk about up top. Tail. They got the shackle set up. Mind control chasing no tail down. Will be able to get back underneath the tower. In fact, Anna's going to turn, chase down mind control, and they'll get first blood. OG as Liquid try and force the issue a little too hard between the two of them up top. Give it first blood to the safe lane Ember Spirit. And it is out. That was the thing, right? Grimstroke turns no tail. He doesn't die. He sounds up. He's back up to full. And this is the one thing about when you go for the gush on the tide is you're going to try to set up for those kills, but you're a lot more vulnerable. He has a stout shield, but Ember Spirit can hit, can hit pretty hard. Same thing with the Grimstroke, they can easily turn. Down in the spot on lane, Miracle. It's going to be farming up against the Seb Omni Knight with that backup of Jerex at his side. Obviously with GH being in the jungle up the top, it is going to be Miracle entirely on his own for the most part. He'll get pressured a bit down here just from those tossback plays. He should be able to catch up decently, but the thing is that Omnic does pack a bunch, pack a decent punch as well onto that left sealer himself. Jarex is just going to keep being annoying too. This is multiple mangoes. Another right click, another tossback, quick heal probably. Actually held on to it this time. We'll see what itemization that Seb does. I think an Orb of Venom proves to have an incredible amount of value, actually, in the bottom lane, because then you can leave the Omni Knight a bit, and then you can actually right-click and trade with the Life Stealer. So I definitely want to see Seb go for picking that one up, because I think he, he actually did just buy it, so he will be able to 
put the pressure onto life so just give him that extra right click because your rage is not really an element that you have to worry about when you're going to be pressuring i see kuro down here now to just offer some sort of way of alleviating the pressure of these two heroes keep the distraction high so that jerex isn't able to to stay in the lane beating down and, and tossing back miracle safe lane life steal yep so we see mid starting to get to that advantage for the monkey king constantly getting those jingu stacks up again onto weha and then you can just secure yourself all these denies it's a, it's a tough lane for Weeha. Yeah. But he'll back up in jungle, as P Panel mentioned, as you've seen, especially in the early, earlier series of the day. He's always going to be able to catch up. Yeah. Still jungles incredibly efficiently. Yeah, we've seen him do it many times. And, you know, his, his TA, really, that he's been able to bring out a lot of the times for, for Liquid, as it seems on the main stage, has always been pretty darn good. Except getting turned on there by Miracle but we'll have to sustain. And now the Orb of Venom is delivered, and this is where he can start to actually push Miracle off of the lane with Jarex. Jarex again. Still the combo. Another combo. Doesn't uh, actually choose for the toss back there. Miracle was yeah, out of regen, and, and open wounds have been used, but could have potentially have been a kill. Top lane, Anna. He's actually going to turn, sort of baiting mind control. Look how low he's standing. He's got a slider bit, Ooh. keeping himself out of range of the anchor smash. Anna just dancing himself perfectly around the tide. The flame guard will end, so it won't be quite enough to take mind control down immediately. But you've got to imagine there's going to be another slight fist available. Mind control just south up in the trees. Another stroke hits, but that south will make sure that the slight fist from Anna won't quite kill him off. Still, though, he's out of regen now, mind control. So we'll be ballooned out of the top lane. Topson's really starting to take advantage of this mid lane. He even uses the glyph under the tower, and Weeha is just forced to sit and meld, healing up with the south. Topson's really taking over. He loves this matchup. Another thing that this hero provides you is you can dive and chase the TA, but now GH yeah. shows up. GH from the trees. Topson, he didn't expect this. He's trying to use the mischief to play it out. He's looking for that fourth thing. He cannot get the boundless strike off, though. Great move from GH. That was Catches clutch. Topson off guard. He knows the Topson, as you say, is going to play like this. He's looking for these dives, these plays around the tier one towers. GH is prepared. Super clutch. We has definitely get better. Give him like a big hug or something after that play. As he'll be able to go back and continue the jungle as he gets an arcane rune on GH, and he's actually saving gold. You see, he's queued up. He's got the gloves. He's got the dominator in his quick buy, but I you, think you might think be he's contemplating a minus. He's he's thinking about it. I won't be surprised. We're at four and a half minutes in and being that close to it. Yeah, especially after getting setting up for that kill. We will see Thompson go right back to the mid lane though, and we'll be able to continue pressuring Weha quite easily as that monkey came with the matchup. I just certainly have to to be aware of the potential of. GH may be coming across again. Obviously, with that ward that OG do have down that they placed earlier in the jungle, they'll see any movements from that kind of angle. GH is going to start to, to have a bit of a poke on the Jarex. Trying to go for the shackles, but with the avalanche already out, Jarex will not be held down. Looks like it won't be the Midas. He buys boots, buys clarities. He's just going to jungle. and looks like he wants to actually move around and make plays because he's got the points of the Malefice already. Maybe he wants to just be more active around the map and be able to respond to the aggression that he knows that OG's going to do, right? You know how OG's going to play. You know Topson is going to do well in the laning phase, and then he's just going to run around and try to set up kills all over the place. So being able to respond quickly, that looks like it's going to be the approach for GH. And he's got relatively good cause to do it around. Right? Yes. Other cause that offering Weeha's case could be the damage. And to down bottom Miracle's case, that extra bit of slow and disabled. Mid lane, Thompson. Look at the balance up. We are trying to commit. There's the wraparound. Jerex comes in with the gang, tosses back. We are, as he tries to go in for that kill attempt, will not get away with it. OG able to easily turn it around with the three at the mid. See the way for the six minute runes. OG, again, you see how much they've prioritized those power runes early on. Jax is going to be the one that's able to grab a haste rune. Level three, so has got the levels to try and make a bit of a play onto Kuro. Diving him underneath the tower, Kuro. He'll stand with the shackles. Another blast, but Jax just has the combo damage, bringing him down. Ooh. Snick charges through Kuro, though. Actually keep him alive, and now the haste rune is worn out. And Miracle, he's in for the free kill. He did not do the math. Kuroki did, though. Nice See him. Honor, though, top. Both carries getting a bit of action. Top lane, Anna and No-Tail. Able to set up for another kill for that Radiant safe lane. Ember getting in behind the tier one towers. Well, there's three points in the slide of fist. Now with the six, the remnants are as well. He hurts. Yep. It's a dangerous lane for mind control to return to. And they really love playing this Grimstroke combo with these melee heroes that can quickly get on top of targets with that high level ink swap. We will, we will probably still see an early level Phantoms embrace. So I think that's another reason why they picked it versus the Tide. 
Yeah. Heading in GH. So annoying, but Mana should be okay. He's got the remnants like you were talking about. GH not quite with the mana at all to offer a black hole follow up. It's GX. Keep tabs with Weeha, don't let him just freely jungle. As I, I feel like every time we've seen Weeha actually playing in the eyes of this Templar Assassin, he gets away with he gets away with murder in the jungle. He just sits there farming it over and over again and doesn't get pressured. OG is not gonna give him that option. Three cores of OG are farming very well. As to be expected, you're playing versus an Enigma draft. That's kind of, if you're not doing well in the early game, you're not doing well in the laning phase, you're in a big amount of trouble. So they are quite ahead there. And my control is starting to get punished quite a lot up top, as we saw from Ana, as well as Grimstroke of No Tail. I love the scan from, from Liquid that does reveal that No Tail's hunting behind the tier one. Heading over towards the direction of GH. Just gonna look to get another ancient stat going. Didn't quite Illusion. manage to make it happen there. Oh, no tail blocked it, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, so they're sitting that. on just the edge of the square, no tail. Yep. As top though, Ana, he's just looking to keep pressuring onto my control here, but my control will be able to step away. No tail. He does want to try and go for this with my control being as low as he is. Cannot close the gap with the ink square. Oh, that's a beautiful back on G8. Just casually stands in position. He didn't even have to move for it. As they're just both sat down, Ana's trying best to get away with the Remnant now, he will be able to escape. As that, that nearly was a huge disaster for OG losing two. They're lucky that Anna was able to get out of there. They're That's... lucky that Jerex was close enough to get an avalanche yeah. there, otherwise very likely he, to die. He would have been dead. He really would have, but as it is, Anna lives, only no tail. And when he comes back, he can full heal Jerex as well. So they can look to make an aggressive play up here. I mean, yeah, they're very immediately important. back over. Now they know they can be extra aggressive, right? There's no black hole. Yeah, very important that Anna survives there. But it's great, I mean, GH so far in this game. As an Enigma who's jungling, able to put so much pressure on the map. His positioning has is, is always been where, where, where he would ideally be. Yeah. Where his team needs him to, to be standing, GH is there to ready to hold the hands. He's got that Dominator build finished. So we will have that creep always running around, probably just stacking camps for the early game and then gonna start looking to set up kills. Because it is a Centaur Conqueror, so it is one of the better ones to actually set up for those ganks. As mid, they really want to sandwich on Kuroki. Straight in, but Kuroki is going to have to charge the turn and pop the shackles. They're doing their best to keep Anna alive. Inkswell buffs up, and there's the start. Connecting on a GH, they're ready to die for more. Thompson straight down behind the tower, jumping forward. Look at the GH, the stuff of the Central Conqueror with the helm of the Dominator. He's keeping GH finally in the full wing as Thompson gets him. We have now turned towards OG. They managed to take away two. They'll continue to chase. They will lose no tower. Thompson's back over. Battle is strike down. They'll surround the TA. We are surely will fall. No, they don't have detection. He's got the mail, he'll stay hidden. I'll go for Kuro instead, Miracle. Just trying to chase for more, another stun indeed from the Sensor Conqueror. The Micro making it real, but Miracle still has to be careful. The Rage has finished and Anna's Flame Guard still persists as they'll chase into the trees. Thompson's got the lockdown, Battle strikes out, Miracle will fall, OG. The three core is just running around as a unit right now for OG, <laughs> looking to kill everybody. Look, look at the map right now. I mean, they're thinking about going look for at the, more. The lanes are all open, oh, they're just battling. He's able to chop the tree down, Mind Control. Radiance. Quick with the Lumberjack plays. Gonna stream if he can try to Ravage. Ravage does get the three of them. Seth's getting burst slow. Heals out in time. We are comes across. Hex lockdowns there for Kuro. They'll get Thompson. They quit. Can they punish OG even more for diving for this? The X12 slider fist again. Mind control. He stuns up the flame guards. The slider fist damage is too much for them this early on. Kuro moves off the wall. He's got the shackles. He's holding him down. Hex is out as well. Kuro <laughs> finishes off Anna all by his own. And we are get set as well. OG, all five out of the game as Liquid say, get out of our half of the map. <laughs> 10 minutes in and we have 10 heroes duking it out That's over love the it. ancient area. That's what we want to see. There's farm in every lane. Bounty runes are spawning. I think every single game that we see, it's like, guys, bounty runes. Every team starts running over to bounty runes at those five minutes. Not this game. These teams are just bringing the battle to each other. And I think that, you know, this is why these teams were so excited to face each other in oh, the grand absolutely. finals. You know that Kuro and Notel, they wouldn't have it any other way than to meet face to face in the best of five grand finals. I feel like we hear the teams talk about this a lot when they get to the later stage, they're like, I, I want to play versus this team. And they're like, why do you want to play versus this team? And it's like, because they like to just fight and we like to fight and that's what makes Dota I mean, OG's already eyeing up the chance to get back over. It's constant. GH. They're diving. Chains are there. Seven no tail with the back of GH. 
He is going to struggle to hold them off. We'll get him in that pulse down, but the purification burst from Sebs is enough to bring him low enough. No tail getting the finishing blow. As OG, as soon as Liquid kill them all, we'll get them back over to the base. They are straight back over, keeping the pressure on. We'll see here, fantastic turnaround from Liquid Double with damage. that Ravage, and then of course that beautiful damage. ending. Kuro able to get that kill on Anna, all on his own. And all little things too, right? That fruit, even the Dark Troll Summoner that GH controls, and he gets the net onto the Omni Knight, he can't actually get into Heavenly Grace and protect Target. So no, uh, GH, every little thing matters. This, this helm of Dominator, I don't think I've seen anyone use it as well as GH has been able to in these first 12 minutes. Yeah. The micro has been absolutely on point. We're 9 to 9, less than a 1k difference at just under 13 minutes in between OG and Liquid in this game too. You can, feel the, you can feel the way that OG's playing is that they want to punish the greed. Liquid went for greed. They've got Midas on the life stealer. They have an enigma in their trap. OG wants to just keep this battle running at them. This is very OG-like. They just want to fight. Just gonna have vision with the rest of this water. Thompson oh, set up perfect from the trees. Wukong's come on down. Boundless strike already used. It doesn't matter. He's able to jump forward. Look to chase Miracle. Miracle does get the jukes off. Now it's the movement speed with the phase boost. He'll get himself out across the trees. They'll still try and chase. Thompson Boundless still unavailable for six seconds. So Miracle will actually be able to escape. GH, he comes forward. He starts to have a bit of a punt. Stuns out for Ada. He's in with a wrap around. Change around. Boundless strike back up. Slam down onto the Enigma. GH is gone. They're diving up to Tears, freeze, OG, they're in the base. They get my control as well. Since every single tower up in the mid lane, but OG, they're taking the fight to the base. Dude, look at this. Look at this. All the lanes are open. All they want to do is battle. We as well gonna get caught out. This is ridiculous. <laughs> And now they're gonna okay, now they're prior to that. Alright, now we've sandwiched up to a tower. Now we can go for this one. Oh here. yeah, hey, does, does anyone else wanna take a tower? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go on then, Seb. Yeah, let's go on then. We'll take some of these these objectives. We can hold back on the killing for a little bit. 13 to 9, OG able to break a little bit ahead there with that play. I don't think I've ever seen a, something like this in a game though. Where and it's, in a it's grand just, finals of TI. Exactly, they're literally just ignoring la lanes or they're open for heroes to farm. But who cares about farm? Look at this, the three cores of OG, they see life still on the map, all three of them immediately run to bottom. They're like, get him! That shows. He has to hide. They want to collapse, rage in a TP will do it. Nowhere to hold him down. Miracle's out of the neighborhood. And they'll set up for this tower now. Oh, well, I guess there's no kills to be had brown here. We've got to take the tower. So yeah, Anna will place. reluctantly take it. But they're going to battle top. They see my control for a second. All right, All right here oh, we go. A kill has been spotted. Let's have a look. Ravage is available as well as the black hole as GH gets over. Toss back underneath the tower. Mind control starts with the anchor smash. Thompson, he's already got the Jingu built up. Avalanche control and mind control causing issues. He needs the rest of his team to get it. They're not going to come. Mind control is going to be left for dead. Oh my god, just relentless. <laughs> just relentless running at them. They're really trying to punish the greed. I think that's the biggest thing to point out here is that OG, they do not want to give any type of low period. When you look at Liquid's draft, it's a slow paced draft that's based off of cooldowns. They don't want Weeha to get be able to get away with murder like we were talking about earlier about going to the jungle and just farming. No mercy. As another tower, they'll find this one here because they're in this lane looking for kills. So another tier one, but it gets the nine. Good play there for Nota. Gets the silence out before a rage is available. Stopping Miracle from being able to commit through the stun. Phantom's Embrace could catch a lot of things off guard here on the Liquid Draft, like we mentioned, versus the Tidehunter especially too. That Kraken Shell can be very annoying to play against if you're versus Phantom's Embrace. Just constantly applying that silence on yourself. I need, I need that Dessa done on VR. Yeah. Then, the, then, you know, it becomes a little scarier to keep this aggression up. And until that point, OG, they're going to move forward. But GH from the tree line. Black goes down as well as the Serpent Woods. Serp will be able to offer up the GA, but Mind Control's Ravage caps the two of them. They've got the lockdown. Shackles are out. Tops are surrounded. They'll turn with the Boundless Strike, but the four of them will kill him off. And is going to jump in. They want to try and make sure they can find the trades. Who can they get? Ink Swell starting to connect to the Mind Control. They're on top of them, burning them down with the Flame Guard. But Liquid, they're holding themselves close to the wards. Saying, you can come. You can come, OG. But OG, they won't fall for that trap. They won't force the fight any further. They've lost Topson. That was... Three ulties for Thompson, though. That's Black Hole. I mean, Rabbit, it is top. Serpent he's, Wards. He's quite a high value play. You That's know? very true. But the location where they get it right, you can tell that OG, they're the ones dictating the pace, forcing reaction after reaction after reaction by Liquid. Forcing them to use literally triple ultimates to kill their mid laner because they have that Omni behind him. Now we're doing Desso for Weeha, 100 gold away. He's getting the space. His team is trying to fight back, giving Weeha some time to get that item that he really needs in this game. For Miracle, 
needs that omelette done after yeah. the Midas. Then, then you have two cores that you really have to be careful about diving upon as OG. Oh, my control, he's been spotted. Thompson. They want him. Found him alone. As again, Thompson and Jerax able to find these quick and easy pickoffs. Kuro's going for the TP out. Anna has not got any disable backup to hold him back. So Kuro will escape. Thompson, as soon as he's taken out of the game on the top lane, he is straight back in and he's killing people already. Yep. It's not time. And even Smoke, look at this. He kills bottom. The line is drawn. They just want to go, go, go. This is a beautiful pace that OG's bringing out here in game two. They have the 3k lead. They'll know that they're around. Take out the Ops Ward as well. Topson will kill it. But there aren't those big ops, as you mentioned, straight in towards the tier two tower. Ada has no fear as he collapses immediately on top of the TA. We hard surrounded the control that no tail offers is too oh much. God. But we hard to withstand at the moment. Jump forward over towards Kuro. Anna just loving the pace that he can play with Topson by his side, running down hero after hero oh, 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 oh. as OG just keep the kills a coming. They're just, yeah, they're just moving too fast. The, the pace that they're setting is just too quick for Liquid to respond right now. My controls is being... Look at my controls that way. I don't think I've seen that almost ever. He is bottom three net worth. Bottom and tied. three. Bottom of the sea. One, six, tied. six. He's got to try and get himself up to some shallower waters. As he... He's got a big recovery to do. Sure, we've seen he can still make very impactful plays with the Ravage alone at the moment. It's, it's too fast of a pace though still, OG. If they have anyone, like, if they have their cores together, which they've pretty much been doing all the time, it's so hard to bring them down. We see how hard Heavenly Grace counters all of these disables that do come out. Mahan, a miracle. Who'll be able to get away with this play? Every time, Raise CP, nothing to stop it. Liquid's trying to find any type of place to farm in very unexpected places. Look at where my control is right now, and look at where GH is. Oh. This is them just being like, OG seems to just know where we are on our, our side. Let's take the farm well, from their side. That's the thing, right? They know that OG is it's just looking for fights. Look at it. Yep. They're, they're fighting up towards tier threes. This is literally where OG doesn't want to be. They don't want to be on their half of the map. That's, nope. that's defensive, slow, and boring. So that does give this space. And Liquid's starting to make a bit of use of it. OG. Into the pit, is spotted out by the Weeha Trap. Yep. Can got... they do anything with it? They've got Black Hole and they've got the Rap. Yep, they've got their ulties available. OG, they have their Guardian Angels up, but Seven is relatively low on mana. They stopped the rush and they're like, oh, heroes have been spotted. Go for the fight, Miracle is in the mid lane. They're gonna go for jump on Miracle, instant rage and a back off. Still, they managed to sandwich them. If Liquid can get the Tide and the Enigma in, they could go for a good fight from the low ground. Kuro, Miracle. disabled. He traps up no tail in the circle wars. Miracle's the focus, Miracle on ball. They're walking over my control, tries to get around the company can't bound the strikes out. And the Phantom is embraced again, no tail. Stopping around my control could be able to offer the ravage for now. And Anna and Thompson, they're still good to go. Dust is out. They've got the detection prepared. Weehaar's left behind. They take a both calls. They're going to get the third as well by looks of his OG. Oh they jump over, catch out by control. And they'll also toss back at GH as OG. They just keep killing oh every God. single member of Liquid over and over again. They're playing the fights perfectly. The execution of these fights it's, is absurd right now. It doesn't now. get any better than this from OG. It's 31 kills at the 21 minute mark. They're just, uh, sorry, at the 20, 20 minute mark, they're running around, bounty rune spawn. They just kind of fake that roast a little bit. They know, they're like, oh, there's a TA trap in here. They have to know that they're versing a TA and they have to know there's traps in there. And, you, and, and then they just bring the fight as soon as Liquid shows them ever. Yeah. They don't care. They get the boundless strike when it looks like my control's trying to get a perfect ravage and then he gets silenced and from it there, is, it, the no fight gets so hard. He knows exactly, a bug on mind control, Bam, yep. they cannot do anything. You saw GH moving as well. If my control gets that Ravage off, GH is able to get it with a black hole. Maybe they limit the casualties. Maybe they, they're able to at least bring someone down with them from OG, but it's not the case. OG using every spell in the right order and on the right target. Yep, and they're itemizing really well now too. We see Seb, he went from the Medallion early on into a Vlad's. And what are we looking at on the side of Liquid? It's Pretty much, I mean, they have, they have magical damage too, but the Templar Assassin is really the one that's going to be dealing all that damage on their lineup. And he's he's going to have a much harder time versus a Solar and Vlad's on being thrown on the target that he's focusing. And again, the, sort of the, the chaos of these fights, you know, sure, it's, it's sort of been a group effort, but look how well they're able to prioritize their main man, Anna. He's only died the once in all of these engagements. He's 7, 1, and 11. So despite the fact that sometimes you'll see Thompson fall, they're throwing bodies in, they're getting so much done that Anna is able to benefit off. And it's not like Thompson's not farmed. He's actually ahead of Anna in the farm here. He has a Radiance with the Echo Saber already finished. Excuse me? Versus a TA. 
This is a Radiance versus TA so early on. This evasion, this minutes in. Of, of the Radiance onto that refraction as well, it's gonna prove to be super problematic. And even versus Blink Daggers, that's the other thing that we know the top center, why he really likes Radiance, is when you throw down your Wukong's command, all of your individual monkeys get the Radiance applied oh, in that yeah. AoE. So getting Blink Daggers and blinking and ravaging and causing chaos is near impossible. You cannot escape it. You no, need you the cannot. BKB and Blinks if you want to try and make the jump. And even then, you're still gonna be slowed down in the way that you had to commit with them. Yep. As Rocha, OG's in the pit, no chance of Liquid heading over. As Anna will claim the Aegis. And with 3k gold towards the next item. My control hype. They, they saw him for a second. He's got a TP. Uh -oh. They've obviously got ways to cancel it, OG, I don't think. Oh, he's crazy already. My control's getting out of this one. He shows himself, they get a glimpse of him. And it's just more and more gold and glory for OG. 22 and 10, 22 minutes in. This is the OG you expect to see after they go down a game in game one. They are relentless with the pressure that they're applying. No mercy. You pick a greedy draft versus them, you know that this is the way that they're going to play. Just running around looking for non-stop plays, especially when they have Topson on Monkey King and Ana and Ember. These are just incredibly fast-paced miracles. It's been found again. They get the combo and he's not able to get the rage off. The Phantom Embrace from no -Tell, along with that combo, leaves no chance for Miracle, Miracle to get out of there. And now they can start looking for some towers. It's gone to that point again when OG said, all right. We've done enough killing. Let's get some more objectives. Tier 2 tower in the middle lane will be taken. Weehar's doing his best. They keep that top lane pushed out. Has the blink of the Deso, so can try for these plays. Bottom lane, GH and Mike's drop. They're eyeing up Topson. But he's got Seb. And then, oh, look, Heavenly Grace. 2,500 health. Monkey King walking around. No fear in the world at all. As Weehar, I mean, Blink's already there. He's in position. That's going to allow Topson to close the gap. And we are. There's a radiance. They do not have detection, but he is slowly burning. They've got another toss as well. Oh. This is, oh, oh, oh. Burnt. Burnt to pieces. This is. Burnt to smithereens. Is out of control oh. by OG right now. That's a painful way to go. As OG, you, you can feel the magic that they're bringing right now. Look this is what has brought them to this point in the tournament. This is this is why they are your defending champions. If they turn it up, if they hit this right sort of pattern of plays. And look at this mic control. He wants something. It just anything. Stop. OG are making this game to hurt for Liquid. This, this is painful right now. This is just this is just the beautiful act. Look at the damage coming out from the cores. To have that much damage, just to hear it at 24 minutes in, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Just keeping all the aggressive moves, like you said. Liquid, they were trying to even move the Nick one, move the Tidehunter out onto the OG side of the map, but OG's like, no, we're gonna keep all the aggression onto Liquid's side. Don't let them get any breathing room in this game. Put down deep aggressive wards and just keep, keep running at them. Don't let Miracle get this Radiance online. He's almost got it though. That's the one thing. Miracle has his phase, has the Midas, has the armlet, and will soon have that rad. But the rest of his teammates are so far behind. And a TA, when you're playing from behind like this, is incredibly difficult when you're versus Absolutely these natural powers. Oh, yeah. He cannot show his face in the fights, we huh? And they oh, remember, when they open with TA, you're setting yourself up to this. OG, they they like triple down to make sure they have things to do with him. Omni Knight is an incredibly good hero versus TA at all stages of the game. Jarex, he's already prepared bottom, waiting for the next kill to set up. See, oh, they already got TPs coming. In come the TPs. Jarex, he's in with the setup. They'll Ooh. still get the blink off. Did have enough charges left on refraction to get it out, and he's going for the TP away. They will not catch him. So this time, Weeha will get himself away from this terrifying squad from OG that is just moving from lane to lane. You cannot show your face without the expectation of three heroes immediately collapsing on you. Anna. Anna. Got the vision here, as they'll get in with the setup. Kuro tries his luck, tries to get out, doing oh. the warning for the team. Jarex has also found Mike Draw. Anna still diving in towards the base as we are. He got Thompson's tree. We are. Tries to turn with the mail here. Thompson's there with the bound. This track, Weeha is just dying inside the base. The, yeah, this mobility is 
It's just absurd. Ember's Burn, Monkey King, they're everywhere. You cannot I set up anywhere on the map. I, I just get across the map too quickly. I feel like we're, we're just saying that you cannot let OG have these two cores together. They just play off each other so perfectly. The timings that these heroes hit, they're just on top of you at the same point of the game, and it just doesn't slow down. Yeah. Bit of a timing window here for Link. Oh my god, Miracle. Dropping solo. They've got Blink Dagger on the Tidehunter now. But Jarex actually, I believe, countered. Hey, yeah, I think he counts on his TP. Up top, Mike's Troll can't get back to base. He cannot. Chased around. And now Thompson's cutting off the escape route as well already. There's no tide for the defense. As he's he can run, he could, he could deal with the creep wave, but he's not going to be able to head back and help out if a fight does kick off in the middle. As they'll find him, they'll chase him. Monster kill for Thompson. It's... Oh my god. It's, it's incredible to see how hard OG is punching back after that game one loss. They're, they're really just giving no room to Liquid at all. No room in the map, just constant mobility, constant running around, constant fighting. And Miracle, like we said, he's kind of farmed. They have the BKB on the Enigma as well with that blink on the Tidehunter. But OG, they have a 15,000 gold lead, a 20,000 experience lead, and they have given, what? I think they've only given OG one or two towers in the last 10 minutes and no kills. There's a full Scotty on Thompson. And 20 minutes in, this game, I think, it is entirely on GH and Mind Control to make some incredible five-man play. That's yeah. the only way right now. That is really how it feels. It and they have they have the BKB black hole, which is not counterable for Moji at least with the stun. But Oji tanky. Yeah. And getting into them as well, right? If they have the Wukongs down, lay down. He's gonna die if he gets that black hole off. He, he will. And now also, they've got a better way to heal each other and help each other. There's an Aghanims on Seven. So that Guardian Angel is going to provide that massive amount of HP regen as well as that protection from wherever he's going to be to pop it off. I don't think they're going to have the damage to do with OG at all. Miracle trying to push into Thompson, but with the items that Thompson has and the bust that he does, Soul finds out. They're going to try and jump forward. The Wukong's come on. It's now Mike Troll off the rabbit. The GA's already out. They've got the black hole. GH pulls those. He's stuck inside the Wukong. Three dead on Liquid. OG just beating them down one by one. The buybacks will come out from both Kuro and Miracle. But both GH and Mind Control are gone without their ultimates and without buybacks. The game continues to worsen for Liquid as OG passed the racks on top of Miracle, tossing him back into the balance. Triple kill for Thompson. Wow. As OG, this entire game has been a highlight reel for them. We are, you get something. It's a lot of money, of course, Anna. So that's a little bit of glory for Liquid. Oh, Jarek, it will go down, maybe. No, the heal, they give the rampage to Thompson. Extra bit of salt in the wounds there. As they're holding on. They're going to give them I mean, respect, though. They're going to back up. Well, I feel like OG doesn't mind. They're enjoying this. They're loving Radiant this. They don't want this to end. Under <laughs> they want to keep playing. They've got such a lead on all three cores that you know right now in the booth, OG are really enjoying themselves right now. Oh, especially Thompson. 16, 3, and 14. Oh. Part of 30 oh. of the 35 kills on this Monkey King. That is insane in this type of game on the finals of TI. Oh, you played on Jerax. Everybody's getting their items on OG. Yep. That's some luxury ones, of course. But yep. It's not letting it. Just not letting Liquid get anything. They have a Templar Assassin who is at 11,000 net worth in 30 minutes. You don't hear that very often. Usually, when you hear a TA at 30 minutes, he's going to be peaking at the 18, 15,000, 17,000 gold marks. Maybe even higher than that. OG just not allowing it, Liquid to play with this draft at all. They're sandwiching and closing the map off even more. Picking up those more luxury items and agonims now, of course, for Ana too, so he can just be even more mobile. And there's no black hole for 60. Ravage is up at 30. OG just walk up to this high ground. And another agonims, of course, too, for Thompson. Liquid can't fight it. They are just far too strong on OG right now. Their only hope is with the black hole and the Ravage, and we saw even last time, it was exactly as you said it would. If Wukong's command is down, BKB black hole is not gonna last long enough. And even if it did, they just do not have the damage right now to kill these heroes. They're too tanky, and like I said, to a seven, right? Seven, the back line, just able to heal everybody with that Guardian Angel. It's already. 
Trying to pull the wave away they from mid, but they're chasing. They saw we hot. And it's not on. Jerex is over. There's the E-Blade combo coming out. A GA to celebrate as the fight continues down bottom, making sure that no doubt doesn't go down. The two of them soul bound together. Anna's in with a change. Brownlee strikes down on a miracle. Miracle cannot get out of this one alive. He's dead without buyback. My control as well. The chase never ends from OG. You have to imagine they, they tap out of this one pretty soon as OG. 31,000 gold lead. So many different items picked up. They're cleaning up the last racks. A dagger even picked up GH. no tail. He's popped the BKP. He's going to go for the black hole on the two of them. Looks at the pulse and in fact gets Anna as well with the wrap round. But they just don't take any damage at all. GG is called. The suffering will finally come to an end for Liquid in this game too. As OG take the victory. One to one now in this best of five grand finals. And Liquid, oh, they've got to be feeling pretty shaken up after that game. OG coming into this game to showing why they are the defending champions from last year. This is one of the most dominant games we've had in a grand finals. It, it nothing, nothing at all went Liquid's way in that match. It's crazy how much Thompson and Ana were able to do. Even Seb too, right? He was running around. We saw the three cores from OG literally just running around from lane to lane to lane, killing anybody that showed their face on Liquid. My control ended this game. 1, 12, and 6. They didn't ever let him even try to recover in this one. They didn't let Weeha recover at all either. They just did not let anybody on the side of Liquid even get to play the game of Dota 2. What a game. What a game too. And ladies and gentlemen, as I say, with that, the series now tied. 1-1. One to one. Liquid, they've got to do some serious revising to come into game 3. But something totally different as this game 2, they got dismantled. They got this.